so much for having me. It's an absolute honor. Thank you very much. And what an introduction. Wow. <laughs> Jen, Jen, first up. Yeah, is, how's the isolation brewing up for you? How's virtual school? Uh, virtual school is actually, it's actually not as bad as I thought it would be. I thought it was all going to be a bit iffy and like no one really knows what's happening, but actually it's all kind of working out quite well. I'm managing to wake up on time for my first lesson and uh, sleep after three o'clock until the next morning. So we're going well so far. Yeah. How's, nice. how's isolation going for you guys? Um, I, I've turned into a cliche, so forgive me, but I'm growing a moustache and um, baking a lot. Hen, what about you? I'm going slightly mad living in Opperden's office in Hammersmith, so I've, I've got nothing to do apart from buy mugs with our names on them. <laughs> it, it happens to the best of us. It, it happens to the best of us. But I did have a great time this afternoon reading thread.com, which looked awesome, by the way. So Thank you very, very, very much. Thank you very much. I would love it maybe to start in your own words. Like, I'm sure you never woke up as a, as a, as a baby and went, I'm going to be an entrepreneur. What yeah. kind of led you to doing what you're doing now? And I guess what would be some like core advice you'd have for some of those kids out there who like would really like to start their own business? Uh, okay, well, you're, so the first question was, I honestly, you're right. I never really woke up and thought, okay, I really want to be an entrepreneur. It was, I kind of had the idea for I Cook It at the time and we slowly made it happen. And at some point, like it was a bit of like a no, it kind of it was a bit of a gray area. We kind of thought, okay, I'm kind of becoming an entrepreneur now. Don't we know what's happening? Da, da, da. And then all of a sudden, you come out on the other side, and someone's calling an entrepreneur. And you're like, okay, that just happened. So it, you're right. It never, it, I never really woke up and thought, okay, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. I mean, I didn't even know what an entrepreneur really was when I was like had the idea for it, and I kind of grew into the role as such, as opposed to deciding I wanted it and then coming up with the idea. Nice. And what is, um, in sort of broad terms, what does Thread actually do for us who, for those who haven't been onto the website? Uh, Thread does four things. The first thing and our main, the central tenant is the website, which is thread.com, which we have actually just soft launched. So we haven't, we haven't told everyone about it, but obviously you guys know. So uh, thread.com is the website that has just soft launched. That is the central tenant, as I said. Uh, then we have the media side, which is all of our social media accounts. So we've got six social media accounts where we curate. So that's Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, two Instagram, Snapchat, the whole shebang. And, obviously, and then two music medias where we release Spotify playlists, SoundCloud mixes, that kind of gist. We have the uh, kind of marketing side or like the media, not media, like the consulting side as such, where companies will come to us and say, we're really struggling to get Gen Z onto our side. Can Gen Z help us to get more Gen Z? And then in that case scenario, I would help them to discuss about how to get more Generation Z, uh, a more of a following by Generation Z onto their websites. And then our final role is production, which is our YouTube channel, uh, thread dailies, thread talks, uh, that whole kind of video element. Nice. Jenk, if I, were, if I were trying to launch a business out to the youth yeah. of today, let's call them Gen Z. Okay. You would be the first person I would come to because you'd have more you of what you're, what you're doing than me. Thank you. Before you came on the show earlier, we launched a bit of a poll and it was a real like strong feeling in the audience watching that they think social media can be a real positive thing for their generation. Mm -hmm. We've talked about this before. What are your feelings on like the way social media is going and how guys and girls your age can kind of make use of it in a positive way? Uh, I think it's a super, super, super useful tool for companies. And I think that some companies use it really, really well. And some companies really don't use it very well. Uh, we try and use it as well as we can. And I think that we're doing a pretty good job, if I can say so. But, and... Uh, I think the way you really tackle social media as such uh, is by uh, staying, really knowing your audience. So like, for instance, for like Snapchat, where we use Snapchat, we'll put like different things of uh, like behind the scenes, our office, the guys in the office being funny, just like general, like it's pretty good banter. And then that's much more of a Snapchat kind of content. Whereas on Facebook or like on LinkedIn, on the other end of the spectrum, you'd put much more like corporate, much more informed knowledge, much more like less, less raw as such. It's more like polished and you're presenting something. So I think that, but on the other side of that, if I were to put like a LinkedIn post and put on a Snapchat story, that would have nowhere near the same effect as opposed to 
if I put it where it kind of belongs as such. And the same is vice versa. So I think if you know the content that you're producing on each platform, you're going to do really well. But that's how quite a lot of uh, companies will fail by using social media is because what they're doing is they're saying, okay, here's our content, whether it's like a link to a story and they've put like an overview on their, on their social medias and they're putting the same thing onto everything and they're getting like a kind of, a, a kind of average give back of people going onto the links. But if they kind of curate it per, uh, per social media platform, I think they're going to do much better. Jen, can I ask, has, has, um, yeah. has age ever been an issue or has, that, has it ever been a, a barrier for you in what you do? Uh, age has never really been an issue. And actually, on the other side of that, I actually think that age has been quite useful for me because I've gotten a lot more press and attention uh, because of my age. So I've done, so there's been quite a lot of situations where if someone were to like stand up on a stage and give uh, like a speech, but if I were to give the same speech, it would just have a different kind of effect because I was 14 at the time and they were 30 at the time. So it's, it's like, it, it, it does help me in quite a few situations. No but yeah, no, no, your question, it hasn't hurt. No surprise that people set up and listen, I think, when there's a 14-year-old speaking to 500 yeah, people. Yeah. Can I ask, there are a lot of people out there who are only a little younger than you probably, who are like, I'd love to start my own business. I have no idea how. It seems like a lifetime away beyond school and university. Do you yeah. have any like, golden rules or top tips or useful, useful bits of information that, in terms of kids starting their own business? I think there's two rules. I think the first one is definitely people are always really afraid of failure at my age. And they think it's super expensive to fail. And once you fail, you can't get back up again. Uh, and I completely disagree. I feel like failing is just like, it just, it's so much easier to do nowadays. And I don't see it as a negative anymore. I think the, the real failure is if you regret, if you kind of regret what you did and you kind of half ass it, and it's like that just, uh, this won't end well for you. And, uh, Someone, someone like I don't remember who it was that said it, but someone's like a, a cheap a failure is much cheaper than a life of regret, which I thought was just quite like an interesting comment to make. And I mean, how many people thought they were going to fail before? Like, uh, how many people had the idea for Facebook before Facebook came out? Or like, how many idea had the idea for Amazon before Amazon came out? And they're just people who were just regretted it, and like they never did it because they thought they were going to regret it. Whereas if they went for it, they would have realized that they would have made the Amazon or the Facebooks of the world. And then they would have, yeah, that would, they would have succeeded. I mean, um, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, I, I mean, you, you've achieved an enormous amount in, in relatively few years. Um, as um, you may not know, we're, we're, we're obviously big into mentoring at Offerden. We're a mentoring business. We believe that that role should be available yeah. to everyone, whether you're 10 or 60. Mm -hmm. Did you have any mentors growing up professionally or personally or anything that helped you? All of the above. I have, have always had quite a few mentors around me. Not like uh, official, you're my mentor now, but people who I seek advice from and they give advice. But I've always had, I've always had quite separate mentors. So I've had professional mentors as such who've given me advice on the professional side of my work. I've had school mentors uh, who give me advice on school. Uh, for instance, my like a really old math tutor of mine happened to go to the same school as me twice in a row. So he kind of knew I was going through exactly what he'd gone through. So if I ever needed any questions or anything, I'd always go to him. So he'd be like my school mentor as such. And then I'd have like my life mentors who are more family, friends, like the closer in a circle as such, like friends, family, you, that, that kind of just. But yes, I've had lots of mentors along the way. So I'm obviously very thankful for. Awesome. Uh, in terms of like um, success, success is a really funny thing that we all try and kind of strive yeah. towards, right? We all want to be successful. And kids are always thinking, you know, I want to be a success. How am I going to be a success? It's a really difficult thing to kind of define. What does success mean to you? And how do you kind of evaluate that when you're achieving what you are age 15, but you've got so, lot, so long to go? It's success is one of those things that I obviously strive for, but it's not something that I were like, obviously success. Awesome. But I'm not going to go every day of thinking in my life, how am I going to be business successful? But that's on the much more business side on the personal side of success. I do strive for success because that's just happiness as such. So business uh, success isn't something that I strive for in the business It's I do the business. So I enjoy it. And I consider enjoying it to be quite a successful 
thing as such. If you're enjoying it, you're more successful than if you weren't enjoying it. But on the personal side, I feel like success is just being happy as such, which I am. That's right. I'm personally more <laughs> successful. That's good to hear. Yeah. I ask, how do you, not, not, not a boring question, like how do you balance school and, and business? But like, clearly your business is, you know, your passion and so on. Uh, you may be as passionate at maths as uh, Fred, but like, how do you balance the two? I've got lots of questions here. Is Jen doing GCSEs? Is he doing exams? How is he dealing with school? Like, how do you balance those two? Uh, or school is always taken priority. 100% always that's the case. I do always try and go to, a, I, I, I put a lot of emphasis into what school I go to based on how they can help me. It starts like how accommodating they'll be. So the school I'm at now is super, super accommodating. They say their, their general guideline is, look, you can go out, do meetings, do interviews, talks, as long as you get your work done and you come back. So that's been absolutely perfect. And so I get all my work done. That's all, that's all fine as such. Uh, but I, when I'm not at home, it's everything I can do to thread as such. Yeah. So it's either at school, school, other than the few occasions, or at home, I'll be working on the company, uh, playing music, DJing, acting, the whole shebang. That isn't school. Nice. But yeah. What kind, of mu- what kind of music do you DJ? Uh, I DJ generally pretty like house, commercial house, that kind of vibe. Yeah. Nice. It's a bad, bad time to be a DJ, Jank. It's tough. Yeah, no, it's pretty rough. To yeah. be fair, having said that, I've seen quite a lot of DJs who've been doing like live performances for hours, like Instagram lives for hours straight on their Instagram. So I thought it was quite cool, to be fair. Well, from, from DJing to, to homegrown chilies, I've got a little shout out here to young Noah, who's said, thanks so much for the advice, Jenk. Really helping me for my own business. I'm starting one now. It's going to sell homegrown chilies. Well, there you go. There you go, Noah. Thank you. Uh, you're very welcome as such. <laughs> thanks so much. Right, Jenk, we, uh, we do this with every uh, guest. You're very kind to, to give us your time and come on the show. This is thanks. our sort of quick fire round and then we're going to have a stupid game of biscuit face actually it's not stupid it's, it's I'm ready. Very- oh, I'm ready. <laughs> so i'm going to ask you very uh five questions i've collated uh most of them from um from the q a okay uh, rupert says thank you so much jenk you're a legend fantastic Thanks you so, are. so this is uh this is just a quick fire round um fire away uh okay favorite film oh uh oh god uh, what's the, I know the film, but I don't know what the name of it is. It's the one with where they made Facebook and it's like set a half. Pardon? Social Network. Social Network. That's a great film. That's iconic. Uh, favorite singer or, uh, group or band or the, um, Oil Connor, the English kind of hip hop artist. I like Lowell Connor as well. Uh, what do you have for breakfast? What's like your big breakfast? I actually didn't have breakfast this morning. I woke up at 8.58 for my nine o'clock drama lesson. So... <laughs> That's not, that's not the routine we're promoting at Often Talks, is it, Jenk? No, it's not. <laughs> However, tomorrow I will have a large breakfast to make up for it. Exactly. Uh, Instagram or TikTok? Different things. Uh, I generally, I use TikTok to uh, use the Discover page as such, the For You page, but I use Instagram to look at my what my friends are doing. So I don't really follow that many of my friends on TikTok. Does that make sense? And I was trying to find a Supreme versus in terms of fashion but I'm so boring that I couldn't. So what, what are you wearing? What is the cool stuff you're wearing these days? Okay, well, I'm actually glad you said that because my, my mate just said he's a clothing designer and I'm wearing his top. So if I, could, if I could put a little plug in for Mason Newman Studios, it's an absolutely lovely t-shirt, very comfortable, very baggy. It's a lovely fit. I am wearing my school, I'm wearing some of my school trainers, which is just some pretty standard Stan Smiths. And I'm wearing some of my dad's old trousers. So that's the, uh, that's well, a look for today. Got to keep it sustainable. Got to recycle. Exactly. I've got to get my best clothes on. Precisely. <laughs> Jank, awesome. You're a legend. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We, before we move on to Biscuit Face, we've got a really nice comment out there too from the Horsfield family who say, thanks so much, Jank, for DJing at the Electric Ball last year to raise funds for the NSPCC. It was I, awesome. I'm very, very good friend with Ed Horsfield. And if, you're, if this is Ed watching it, I'm very nice to see you, Ed. I'll see you very soon. <laughs> I'm sure you'll be back kicking back in uh, embargoes very soon 100% so, can't wait this is the biscuit face leaderboard which for those out there while they're grabbing their biscuit has had an update it's had a refresh when I asked when Bash okay Bash Croft is at 13 Bash I did, I did 
few, our few guest appearances who's actually made a decent go at this. I texted him earlier today saying I have him covered in biscuit face, but so, I really hope that I can do that. So some of you out there watching who are, who are loyal to the show will know that the times have dropped for a couple of people, including Walter and myself, who are now down at seven and nine seconds. We actually reviewed the footage because we're putting together a Biscuit Face compilation. Shout out to Alex Hogg. And in that Biscuit Face compilation, it became evident that not only had Walter lied persistently about my time, <laughs> but I had also lied about his. So there's been some quite lax timing, but we've been back through it. These okay. are the times. You've got 30 so, seconds uh, max. 13 we'll seconds to beat. Th well, 30 seconds is the window, but 13 is to beat from the guest times. Obviously, if you fancy okay. Up with water too. Okay. I've got a little, uh, what are these called? Maryland cookies. They worked well for me at nine seconds. If you've got uh, a big biscuit, you're very welcome to split it in half. I've, I've cut my digestive into quarters. Yeah, Good excellent. Man. Also, we'd really encourage anyone out there, stick it on Instagram, tag us in, tag in Jenk. He will get to see you doing your I'll, business. I'll repost it. If, it's, yeah. if, you get good if you get a better time than me, I'll repost it. And as we always say, as we always say, the aim is in 10 years time, you know, you'll be out, you know, you'll be, you know, whatever in the city, writing for newspapers, and you'll say, you know, I beat Jank Oz at Biscuit Face. Precisely. That's, that's right. it. No hands. Walter's Are we ready, team? We're going to start three. In Wait, just to clarify, what are the rules? I, I haven't actually played Biscuit Face before. You start on your forehead, and you've got to get it down into your mouth without using your hands. Okay. Hands behind your back or wherever, but you basically got to nudge. And I'll give you one tip, which is don't go too quickly. It never works. Well. Three, yeah. two, one, we go. Oh, golly. You tried. Yeah. Oh, no. Go on, Jank. Oh, oh, so close. So close. So close. 15 seconds. Come on. Oh, it's got stuck in my eyelashes. Oh, <laughs> unfortunate. Okay, wait. I'm going for next time. Just <laughs> Last go. Five, four, uh, three, two, one. <laughs> no. I was getting quite competitive about that. And that's like, so you're very good at presenting. You're very good at DJing. You aren't very good at I'm not very good at biscuit face. I'm going to eat this. <laughs> it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a lovely Thank you so much. We're really grateful. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank See you very soon.